In this video, I'm going to cover a technique used by malware authors to obfuscate and hide Windows APIs that are imported by the malware and also explain what PEP traversal is. So when I first unpack a piece of malware and load it into X64, the first thing I'll often do is search for any interesting imported functions and then set breakpoints on those functions. However, it isn't possible with this sample. So if I right click on the window here, go to search for current module and then into modular calls. Normally what I would expect to see here is any functions that have been imported by the malware. So things like create process internal W if the malware is going to create a new process. And then from this location, I can set a breakpoint on those functions, run the malware to hit those breakpoints and then analyze the uh, functionality that I'm interested in. But as we can see, we've got a blank screen and um, the reason for this is the malware author has obfuscated the DLLs and the functions imported from those DLLs. So I've currently got my EIP set to this instruction here and what we can see is the value E40D4AEB that is being moved into ECX. We then have a call to this function here and this is going to deobfuscate and load the DLL. The next instruction is moving the value 5266E75B into the EDX register. Uh, we then have another function here. This is what loads and deobfuscates the API call. And then finally, the API is called indirectly via the EAX register. So I'm just going to demo how this is done and just little clues you can look for to identify this type of behavior. So like I say, this first one here is the DLL loader. So I'm just going to stick a label on this. And let's jump into this function. So another clue which I look for is this instruction here where you can see the value 30 in the FS register is being moved into EAX. So the reason why this is a clue is that identifying a function that is loading DLLs can often be identified by looking for instructions that reference this, reference this value FS30 because this is where what's called the PEB is located. Now the PEB is the process environment block and this contains information about the currently running processes including the list of DLLs that have been loaded or mapped into the process memory. The FS register contains the address of the data structure called the thread information block, TIB, the TIB, and a pointer to the PEB can be found in the TIB at the offset value of 30 in hex. So based on this information, a pointer to the PEB can always be found at FS30, which is this here. So if I right click on that, do following dump and do value FS30, we can see the address 7E, FD, E triple zero. If I just right click on this, and do following memory map. We can actually see on the gray highlighted line the address that I've just read out. And in the information column, it says there the PEB. So we know that's where the PEB's located. So I'm just gonna run X Analyzer just to tidy up this function a little bit. And like I say, with anything like this, I don't know what every line of code's doing, but what I can do by stepping through and just sort of seeing how it behaves, we can sort of get an idea of what to look for. Now we know that the obfuscated DLL name was moved into the ECX register. So we can keep an eye on ECX and just sort of see what's going on. Any comparisons maybe to that value and just try and get an idea of what the malware is doing. So let's just start stepping through this now and uh, see what happens. So as we move down here, we can see um, that there's a start of a loop by this um, black bracket here. So I'm just gonna start stepping through this here and we can see the name of the malware that is uh, being loaded at the minute. So if we just start stepping through this, uh, we can see a bunch of instructions, subtracting, additions, uh, some XORing that's happening. Again, don't understand every line of code here that's, um, that we're stepping through. Um, but we have a comparison there to EDX, which is storing the loaded string of the malware name. Um, we then have jumpy for equals, so it's not going to match that. And then we have a new loop beginning here. 
So this loop here, I think off the top of my head, I think this just enumerates the string that it's loaded. So if we just start stepping through this, we should start seeing this API dash MS win call localization dot exe. Um, so there we go. So the first letter disappeared there. You know, if I just do debug and run to selection here, we can see the next letter has disappeared. So I know that's enumerating that string. So I can just step outside of this loop now and do debug, run until selection. And let's just see what else is happening here. So we can see EAX is being XORed with what looks like some sort of encryption key here, 6B73AC99. And what it's probably done here is it's probably you know, used its encryption technique for how it obfuscates the DLL names. And it's produced this result here EAX, so it's it's going to XOR it, XOR it with 6B7, well, the encryption key, I'm gonna step over that, and then it's going to compare it to what's ever stored in EBP minus 14. So if I just do right click, follow and dump, and do EB minus 14, we can see that this here, what I'm highlighting is the hashed value of the DLL, and it's comparing it to EAX, which is 98A77805. Well, it doesn't match, so the next instruction is jump if equal to this instruction here, but it's not going to match that condition. So we're going to step over that and the loops are going to begin again now. And it's got, it's, you can see now it's now loaded ntdll.dll. So again, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to encrypt and obfuscate ntdll.dll and see if it matches the value E40D4AEB. So if we just jump to this comparison again, do debug run until selection. We can see EAX in the EAX register, the value doesn't match that. So what we can do is we can go to where this jump if equal instruction goes to and just do debug run until selection. And we can see EAX now matches this value here. E40D4AEB, it's reversed in the dump window due to endianness. Um, but if we now step through these instructions, we can see that in the top right hand corner, it's now located kernel32.dll. So kernel32.dll was the obfuscated DLL. So now it's loaded that, it's now got to deobfuscate and load the API call that it wants to use. So this value is moved into EDX, so we need to keep an eye on what EDX is doing. And it's moving EAX, which is kernel 32, into ECX. And then let's just label this to API loader. So we're now going to step into this function. Again, let's just tidy up with XAnalyzer. And let's again, let's just start stepping through and see what's happening. And again, I don't know what every line of code is doing. I'm just sort of stepping through, getting an idea of what's going on, keeping an eye on the values that I do know. So again, I don't know what every line of code is doing. What I do know is that we have kernel 32, the value in EAX and ECX, and we also have this 5266E75B in EDX. That's that obfuscated API call. So let's just start stepping through. Uh, and see what happens with uh, these values that we know. So again, I'm just sort of looking for anything that's generated. Uh, we can see an array here. Let's see if there's anything in that. Nothing there. So let's keep stepping through. So we can see some weird strings being generated. They don't mean much to me at the minute. And we can see a new loop beginning here. And we can also see another array being loaded into ECX. So let's just right click on this, see if there's anything in there. Nothing readable as I step over that. Still nothing there of interest. Let's just keep going. So now, our actually, so now you can see here we've got an API name that's been loaded. So acquire SRW lock exclusive. If I just, you can see that's now loaded in ECX. So if I just do following dump, um, on that, what we can see here is the full list of we have kernel 32 DLL here, and here is all the APIs that are stored within kernel 32. So, the first one we have is 
acquire SRW lock exclusive. No idea what that is, but that's the first one that's been loaded. Um, and then it's then passed to this function here, which I suspect, like before, is probably going to enumerate that API name. So let's just step into it. Um, again, let's just do X analyzer, analyze function. And um, we'll just start quickly stepping through this. Yep, and we can see there the A's disappeared at the start of it. So that's just going to enumerate the name of this API. So if I step over this, we can just hit the return value and go back to where we were. It's now going to XOR this value. So it's you know it's done some sort of encryption on it, stored it in EAX. Again, EAX is being XORed with another key. So that's going to produce a new value, which will see the value change in EAX. It's then comparing EAX to what's stored in EBP minus four, which will be our obfuscated API name, which is 5266E75B, which again is reversed due to endingness. And it's going to jump if that matches, jump if equal to this instruction here. Now we know it's not because we know uh, just by looking at the register that doesn't match so again that's just, just to sort of show you that it's loading in the um, APIs if I go back to um, this window here the next one it should load is acquire SRW lock shared like I say it's just going to enumerate for all of these until the um, obfuscated API name it generates matches this value here 5266E75B so like I say the next one should be acquire SRW lock shared. So if I step over this, we can see there it is. And it's going to do the same thing again. It's going to enumerate that string, generate this hash of it in EAX. It's then going to XOR it with the value 165308FE. Again, compare it to EAX. Sorry, compare EAX to the value we have stored here. It's not going to match, but eventually when it does, it's going to jump to this instruction here. So let's do debug, run until selection. And we can see now in EAX, we have the value 5266E75B. This matches what we have in our dump window at the, at the bottom, 5266E75B. So it's found the API it wants to load. So as we step through these here, we should see, when we get to the return command, well, in, the right, in the top right hand corner, we can see it's get process heap, which is now in EAX. And then the call to this API is made by the indirect call, indirect call to the EAX register. So, you know, get process heap, not, you know, not a particularly interesting API call, but that technique, that pattern, that process is now used throughout the malware in order to perform its activity. So like I say, hopefully should give you an idea of the obfuscation techniques used. Uh, and give you an idea of how the DLLs and APIs are loaded. Thanks for watching, and as usual, if you've enjoyed the content so far, and if you're learning, please follow on Twitter, share on Twitter, and uh, drop a sub subscribe on YouTube. Thanks, guys.